Next one. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa sallam. Uh, I had someone at one of Come, to come close to me. Save time. Twenty twelve. Okay. Yesterday, in the political analysis, we said that Israel will have to dramatically expand its territory to encompass the biblical frontiers of the Holy Land. Whoever wrote the Bible, I mean, sorry, whoever rewrote the Bible, re read Richard Friedman's book, please. Richard Friedman, an eminent American scholar of the Bible, PhD from Harvard, and his book was, oh, Who Wrote the Bible? You will not regret reading that book. Whatever is written in that book confirms what Allah has said in the Quran. Hmm? Whoever rewrote the Torah decided that the Holy Land extends from the river of Egypt to the river Euphrates. Why? Why did he say that? And there is a certain part of the frontiers of the Holy Land which have not been put into the Bible. But I know it. What he did was to say that wherever the Jews lived in exile at that time is a part of the Holy Land. And since Nabi Yusuf salam, took the Jews to Misr, and Misr is not the whole of Egypt. Today Misr is the whole of Egypt. But at that time Misr was the eastern delta between the Red Sea and the River Nile, the fertile eastern delta. That's where the Jews lived, hmm? the Israelite people. So he says from the river of Egypt, meaning the eastern delta where the Israelite people lived for three, four hundred years, to the river Euphrates because they were taken to exile in Babylon. Exiled in Babylon, they were enslaved in Babylon. So that's why the river Euphrates. But remember, the Jews also went to Medina. The Jews also lived in Medina. And so it is likely when Israel makes the effort to extend the territorial frontiers of the state to encompass the biblical frontiers, it is possible that there will be an attack on Medina in addition to one to Egypt. And then Israel takes control of the Suez Canal. Israel controls the oil of the Gulf. Hmm? I want to suggest to you that Israel is planning that big war. And Israel will use weapons of war never used before in history. I want to suggest to you that as I did yesterday that Israel cannot make that move. While a significant military threat still remains in the hands of Muslims. And so the the Pakistani nuclear weapons and the Pakistani nuclear plants have to be destroyed by the hook or by the crook. And the invasion of Afghanistan from 9-11, in consequence of 9-11, is part and parcel of a big plan to eventually destroy Pakistan nuclear weapons. And all the maneuvering is taking place now because that is the target. In December of 2001, just two months or three months after 9-11, I published a booklet entitled A Muslim Response to the Attack on America. We've got the booklet here. And in that booklet, 
I argued that the target is Pakistan's nuclear plants and nuclear weapons. I also argued that in order for them to be able to move in and destroy Pakistan's nuclear plants and nuclear weapons, they will have to provoke civil war in Pakistan. And that's what they're trying to do now. If elements within the Pakistan armed forces were to rebel against the military command in Pakistan and the government, and fighting were to break out within the Pakistan armed forces, that would be the cue for them to move in to save the world from nuclear, a nuclear threat. Hmm? Once they dispose of Pakistan's nuclear plants and nuclear weapons, and to, a, to an extent Iran's missile capacity, then 2012 would be, I believe, all the hype about 2012 is meant to prepare the world for something big. Everybody is waiting for something big. So let's not disappoint them. <laughs> and 2012, perhaps, can witness Israel's big war, the use of nuclear weapons in Israel's war. And eventually, it will then become clear that Israel has replaced the United States as the ruling state in the world. A defining moment in history for the transfer of power from the United States to Israel to be recognized by the rest of mankind.